Lieutenant LaRonda Moore and an agent with the U.S. Marshal Services who to told me that Worthen had been taken into custody in Burbank, California. Worthen had been hiding under the alias of Ronald Klegler and had been in the Burbank area for about five months. I did speak to one of the officers that were involved in his apprehension and he did say that when they confronted Worthen at the motel, he did give them a brief foot chase and at one point even climbed on the roofs of some houses. Worthen was taken into custody, taken to a local hospital where he was medically cleared and transported to the Los Angeles County Jail. Worthen will be held there until he signs a waiver and will be transported back to Camden. This has been a long 16 months and I would like to thank all the men and women of law enforcement, especially Lieutenant LaRonda Moore and the U.S. Marshal Services that helped us find Worthen. And I will take any questions. When he comes back, will this be considered uh, still a state incident or will it be considered federal since he crossed state lines? Would that, does that mean he'll go to Washtenaw Detention Center? Or will it be he will go to the Washtenaw County Detention Center and be charged with a state crime. The U.S. Marshal Services were, had been helping us throughout the last 16 months, and they received information, and which led them to Burbank. Yes. Okay. Did you know if it was someone that knew him, close friend, or? Uh, I, I don't know that. Okay. Do you think adding him to the 15 most wanted list aided in his capture? I think so. It was a really big help. They they upped their their game with it on on that, and he was also aired on In Pursuit with John Walsh, and I, I think that had a big play in it too. Have you spoken to the family? What was their reaction to the news? The that was officer. Yes, we did um, speak to the family last night uh, to let them know that he was captured. What was their reaction? So he will have to go in front of a magistrate or a judge in, in California in front of a, a, a hearing there, and then he'll be extradited back from there to Camden once that's completed. So you'll have your officers going as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Have people been eyeing him for, for five months, or did someone just see him that day and kind of say, oh, this is where we're in? Uh, it wasn't us that day. It, it had, there, there was a process involved that was a few days long, but it, not, not that long. Do you have any idea where he's been um, otherwise other than California? So they did collect some item, personal items from the hotel room, which was his, his cell phone, and other. And once we get that back here and get it processed, we'll try to determine that. So right now, all you know is just California, that's pretty much the details of right. since he left Camden. Right. Can I talk about the resources that your department has kind of invested into this case the last 16 months? I mean, I'm sure... So for Camden, we're a small community, so this has been one of our highest priority cases and that we have just continuously worked. Um, Lieutenant Moore, that's her priority every day when she would come to work is follow-up cases that we could locally. We were really dependent on the U.S. Marshal Services and other outside agencies because it did cross state lines that we didn't have jurisdiction in, so we were really depending on people to help us follow up on leads that we couldn't. We have gotten so many tips throughout the last 16 months for anywhere from Florida to, to Georgia to uh, just everywhere. Do you but, know, I'm sorry, do you know but, if someone can be rewarded with the We don't know that yet. I don't know what what exactly led them to, to Burbank. So when we determine that, we will we'll find out. He said he was. Was he working or? No, he was not working. That someone was helping him? What was he making money? I don't, we don't know that yet. Until we get him back here with all of his property and, and investigate what he has in his property to, to determine that. So right now, do you know if there will be any other additional charges? There could be if we find out that somebody was aiding him with the knowledge that he was a fugitive, yes, we will charge. And, and to confirm, he would be um, brought back here via car? Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
I don't have a time frame on it yet because there still is a process in California that he's got to go through. Like I said, he's got to go in front of a judge. So they're kind of hit their mercy to when that day happens. But the day that he is signed over, we will go get him. Can you um, say again, what exactly is he going to be charged with? The two major counts are two counts of capital murder for Alyssa Cannon and Braden Ponder. Do you know if he had any weapons on him when he was... Not that I'm aware of. He did not have any weapons. If it comes out that somebody else was aiding them, they're going to face charges too. Right? Yes, yes. Will he face charges for being on the run for so long? That's a possibility. We're, we'll, we'll coordinate with the prosecutor's office when we get him back here and see what else we need to do as far as the, the prosecution side of it. Do we know if he tried to change his physical appearance? Have you seen a mugshot? Or I have. I received him? several photos last night. I did talk to the officers that were on scene. And I did verify through the photos that, number one, it, it is him. He still has his distinctive tattoos. He did cover one of them up but he does still have the ones on his body that he didn't cover. And he's gained a little weight, but it's definitely him, and he has since then said his name is Jory Worthen. Um, I have seen a photo circulating online of him in handcuffs on the sidewalk. Would you be able to provide us with that photo? Um, that yeah, I, I will. Yeah, okay. without the blur. Yeah, either one. I mean, yes. it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Without the blur, be preferred. We, we, I'll, I'll have you one yeah. without the blur on it. Can you just talk about what this moment means for you? I mean, for 16 months after, you know, we, we did. There was a lot of speculations that Worthen had killed himself, that he was dead, that a lot. We just never would have given up here until we actually had him physically, whether it was his remains or him alive. We were not going to give up until we had that. That was our priority case in the Camden Police Department. It's not something that I would wish on any chief or any department because we're just a small community, and we didn't expect that, so we wanted to make sure it stayed at the, the highest level, and it did. Considering the fact that he mentioned suicide in the note that was left behind, do y'all consider him to be a risk on a suicide watch or anything like that, or could he possibly go through with it? So they are, the Los Angeles County Detention Center is fully aware of that, and they, they are monitoring, and we're going to take every precaution we can to make sure that that doesn't happen. Is his family active? Yes, yeah. He had violated it, and, and she had violated it also. And um, yeah. Did he have any prior criminal record or anything other than the OP? Did he have any? No. Besides other than domestic violence? Other than the first arrest. No, okay. he didn't. Domestic violence charges. Oh, okay. So this, uh, okay. Um, when, did, when was that arrest exactly? I don't have that. Um, I don't. No. It, was, it was prior to murder so just talk about how this emotionally makes you feel I mean more obviously is emotionally affected by this this is a small town everybody knows each other it's a, a tight-knit community this is a high-profile case I'm sure it's been the talk of the town for the last several months just talk about how this feels emotionally for you to finally have closure well it for me, it's not over, and I don't have closure yet. Once I get him back to Camden and he goes in front of a judge and is officially remained over to the Washtenaw County Sheriff, then I'll have a little bit of closure. But right now, I'm still focused on the case at hand, and I've got to get him back to Camden. So to me, it's not, it's not just over yet until I get him here. Uh, I was emotionally happy last night to hear that he is in custody. It's been a long 16 months, but I also know that i still got to get him back here and complete what we've started, and, I, and that's what... Somebody asked me if I've had any sleep in the last 16 months and did I get it last night? And the answer to that is no. Until he's sitting in the Camden jail, then I'll get some sleep. Do you have a message for Jory before he gets extradited here? Do I? Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, his alias, uh, what was it? Uh, Ronald Flagler? Was that a stolen identity? It was. Do you mind spelling that last name? Um, Sure. The last name that he was going by was K L E I G L E R. And the first name was Ronald? Ronald R O N A L D. Do you have any idea how he left Camden from the very beginning? We suspect he left in Alyssa's car. It was located in the state of Washington. 
So we knew we we assumed that he was on the west coast because of her vehicle being there. So we any tips that we got on that side on the west coast we were trying to really follow up on because of the vehicle. And initially, what type of evidence did you have for him to be your primary suspect in this incident? Um, I really don't want to get into all of the evidence we have, um, other than her car was missing and there was a note left behind. What was the incident about her cell phone ping in Wichita, Kansas on the cell towers? I don't have that information. I don't know about that one. Yeah. We had gotten so many tips across the nation. Once that show, In Pursuit with John Walsh, aired, we had an enormous amount of, of sightings of Joy Worthen, and, and it went from the East Coast all the way to the West. Can you talk at all about the nature of that note that was left? We we'd rather not not at this time. Okay. Like I said, this is not over for us. Sure. This is just him being in custody, so we still have a case to pursue. We got to get him back to Camden. We got to get him in front of a judge, and, and due process has to happen. Do you have a timeline? I don't. I'm we're at their mercy until the judge says that he can come back to Arkansas. So we we have to figure out. And I think they're going to work on that today and trying to get him in front of a judge so we can get in. And as soon as they say that he's clear to come back, we'll, we'll be there within two days. Are you in the Los Angeles County Jail? Like Los Angeles you? County Jail. Um, aside from the fact that he's obviously been on the run and may not be able to answer this question either, but have you learned anything new in the past 16 months concerning this case? Not really, no. Okay. Do you know if he was living alone, solo? Or he, he was, was alone in the motel room. He had been staying at different motels in the Burbank area for about the last five or six months. But there was nobody there with him yesterday. All right, before I wrap this up, I would like to take just a minute from my heart, and I would like to say that we, our prayers and hearts go out to the Pine Bluff Department and for Detective Kevin Collins. Please keep him in your, in your, in your hearts. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you.